And besides NBA rhythm, what were you hoping to accomplish in this practice? Now this is, I mean, we did get a lot accomplished. And this is um, just looking at the, our calendar. This is the, I want to say, I went back at 25 days. We haven't had a practice in 25 days with uh, more than eight guys. Uh, and it's close to 30 days. I think we had a couple of practices where the guys were sitting out. Uh, today was a great day. I mean, it was, it was great to get in the gym and, and get work done. And we know we got 17 games in, you know, 30 days or 29 days, uh, last day of the, the month and then 16 in February. But you got to get work in. We're still a, a young developing team that needs it. And, and I, I loved it. Today was one of my best days uh, of the year because we got in it. We got after it. Uh, it. It was a good practice. And we got some things that we needed to get accomplished and get done. And, and now we just got to carry it over. Um, we're going to be we're going to be fine. We're going to we're going to get into this rhythm. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. It's um, we need it. We need games. We need practices. We need them both. And we need the continuity more than anything. And I think we're going to we're going to end up getting that. When I say that, how is going to be out for, um, I don't know how long, but hopefully it's just a couple of days, uh, but we get Ish back tomorrow. So that kind of will help that area. So, but everybody, we got uh, three guys back probably tomorrow. They make the final decision on, on that tomorrow or tomorrow morning, uh, but they look good today. Their conditioning is uh, not bad considering they've been out for over three weeks. With how old is it the Boeing still? Yep. Yep. We re-aggravated it. Chase. Scott, for the guys that are furthest behind in terms of their conditioning, what would you kind of like compare this stage of the season to where they would be in a normal year? Is it like they're in the preseason or early in the regular season as they try to play catch up? Well, I mean, this is all new. Um, they've been out for two weeks, three guys and the other three guys are, you know, two and a half or three, three weeks roughly. Um, I don't really know. I just know um, what I see. We're doing everything uh, to play catch up, but they need games. You need games. Training camp is there for a reason. Uh, we didn't have that. We didn't have the normal September, the normal October. Uh, and then we had this. Uh, so it's, it's not an excuse. It's a fact that we have to Work, over, work around it and, and, and try to get it back as quickly as we can. Uh, like I said, um, a couple of guys are, I mean, a couple of the guys without naming the names had uh, the symptoms were uh, worse than others. And when that's the case, you know, things, conditioning is, it takes a while. But they're all back and it's all good. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited for what we can do. We still got you know, not quite 60 games left. And if you really want to just look at the standings, which I try to avoid, but we're still a lot of games left and three or three games are so out of the, you know, the play in game. And as you look ahead to the Nets, um, you guys have played them already this season, but they added James Harden. What's the challenge going to be uh, facing them with him now in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they got one of the best. Uh, I mean, they're, they're as talented as any team in the league. Uh, they got high, high, high level uh, players. Uh, are they championship ready now? Absolutely. They have a chance to win a championship uh, this year. They're one of the best teams, if not the best team in the league, if they can, you know, if they can stay healthy and, and beat all the other things that uh, every team's going to have to deal with. Um, we're going to have to guard. We're going to have to, we're going to have to, play and it's definitely going to be a challenge. Uh, we've lost four in a row, so it's not always going to, uh, doesn't get any easier. Uh, and we still got some tough teams right after that. So they're all tough. They're all tough when you're three and 12, but I, I, at least I, at least we know we have most of our guys back and you know, it's unfortunate with Halu, but other than that, we have our entire team back going into this, this game. So that's, that's exciting news. And it gives us a better chance to, to win the game than, than not having our guys back. Ava. 
Hey, Scott, um, let me know if I'm making too much of a throwaway comment here, but what what did you mean last night when you said you're not a good COVID coach? Is it, it what do you, what makes a good COVID coach, I guess? I, I was just, I mean, I was just, what we had to deal with, I was just really talking about what we had to deal with and, and with all the COVID uh, protocols and all the unlucky, um, you know, the, the, you know, getting it. I mean, it's, Nobody, nobody wants to get it. Uh, but uh, the good thing about it, and I, I say this to everybody I've talked to, I'm glad everything, you're, you're fine. I'm glad you got it, very little symptoms. Uh, but, you know, not too many coaches can, um, will be good coaches without all your players. Uh, I, need, I need all of our guys. Uh, you need all your, your tools in the, the toolbox there in order to compete in this league. This league is good and there's a lot of good teams. And it was just, it was just maybe just off the cuff. I wasn't, I need, I mean, I felt, you know, you feel bad, you, you feel bad. Nobody, I mean, you don't really look at it that way because these guys are all incredible NBA athletes, but they, they have families. They go home to families and they got, um, some have young kids, some have um, parents that are, that are, that are older and have some, maybe some, some conditions. So you don't want to put anybody at risk. And, but I'm glad everybody's good. I'm glad all their family members are good. I just want to keep, I just want to move forward with some continuity. I think now we have it. And it's, it sounds like maybe Russ was feeling kind of the same thing you were last night. He said that he maybe needed to reevaluate some of his leadership styles with all of the weird things going on this season. Um, you talk about his leadership so much. Has he, mentioned that to you like coach maybe the things I usually do aren't going to work out this year and do you kind of tell them the same thing like it's you know how are you supposed to handle this year how are you supposed to be good at it well the message today was pretty was simple you know with Russell it's uh, come in and get your work in uh, they got to see you you're, you're you're feeling better last two games that you played you were back to your attack uh, attack mode and you're feeling better so you're not going to have to go through the entire practice but you're going to go through some of the practice. They need to see you. Now, with Brad, Brad's been banged up. Uh, last game, he was banged up. We set him out. He needed his body to need to recover, so he'll come back tomorrow, uh, re-energize. Uh, but Russell, I thought Russell was great. Gave him, gave him a little over half the practice, maybe a little more, maybe 60%, 70%. They needed to see it. And I, I thought practice was good. I thought it, 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 we needed it, like I said almost 30 days uh, that, we, that we've actually had a practice with their entire roster. It's hard to get uh, the things that you need done when you have two coaches subbing in as players to give yourself some five on five, um, five on five full court or even half court. But now we have, we have, I think we have 15, 14, 15 guys today. Fred. Uh, hey, Scott. Um, did you think that you'd ever be participating in an NBA game that was you and Russell Westbrook versus Durant, Harden, and Jeff Green? Oh, man, that's a uh, no, no. Not since I, since, uh, no, it's going to be, going to be interesting. I'm happy for those guys. I'm happy for, they all have had, they're all had, or having great careers and, and they're all, they all have a big, um, they've all been a big part of my life and I have a great relationship with all of them. And I had them at such a young age and I felt like myself and our staff did a pretty good job with the foundation. I hope they feel the same way. Um, it'd be different if you had them all in their prime, but they were 19 and 20 years old, but we were winning games at a high level. Get, I think we were the youngest team in the NBA finals. And, at that time, you all think it's going to be forever and we're going to come back and first round, make it the first year, take the Lakers to six, go the second, third round, fourth round, or get to the fourth round. And then the next year, you're going to have that chip on your shoulder, but it didn't work out that way. No complaints. Um, we gave everything we had. I'm happy for them. They're, they're going to be very successful. They got, they got really good talent. And those three guys, they're going to win a lot of games. They're going to put themselves in a position to win four rounds. All you got to do is bring Perk out of retirement now. Oh, I, mean, you're good to go. I don't want Perk. I'm 
I'm done with Kurt. <laughs> Kurt had those late three o'clock in the morning phone calls. I'm, I don't want those anymore. I had a tough time sleeping last couple of nights and Kurt would call me at three and four in the morning and just feel bad because, you know, he messed up a, a screen or he didn't get the guy open or he, he messed up a defensive coverage. Man, that guy, I'll tell you what, Kurt, he's one of my favorite, favorite guys I've ever coached because of that. Man, that guy cared to a point that, like I said, a lot of times I'm, I finally got to Kurt, it's three o'clock in the morning. Let's talk about this tomorrow at practice. And, no, coach, I, I need three or four minutes. And then it ended up being 35 or 40 minutes, but I love the guy and but I don't want to coach him anymore. Plus, he does a great uh, and, job in killing us. And, and I'm, I'm curious. I, I know um, you guys are in the middle of a season and, and coaches tend to think game to game. But but the talk of the league right now, and I know that like you were on the jump the other day because Brad is the talk of the league right now. And he's the guy who – there's always one guy who's in the center of this is the guy who's going to get traded, right? And at least in the national conversation, that's Brad right now. What's the tone regarding that around the team? How is that handled internally? Is it talked about? I lost at the very end. What was the final? Oh, I, I can, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, no, I was, I was asking like Brad, Brad is like the guy in the league right now who is just discussed in the national conversation and around the league is as the guy who people want to trade for, how does that affect the tone of the team? And is that a thing that you guys ever talk about at any point? No, I mean, as of right now, not Brad and I've never talked about it at all. We know it's part of it. We haven't, we haven't won. When you don't win, teams think that you're just going to throw the towel in and give up. And you're gonna just want to get rid of your your good players, uh, so that's all. That's all part of the business. Uh, and then rumors, you know, not not just nowadays. It's always been. It's always been. Um, ever since I played, it's always been. I mean, there's not many rumors about me, but a lot of my teammates had rumors about him. Uh, Brad is um, no different. He's one of the best players in the league. Of course, every team would want him. But the, the, the good part about it, team that he on wants him the most. Love coaching him. He wants to be here. He signed an extension. He didn't, he didn't have to. So that's what's good about all the former players have given all these players opportunities to, to be free agents and go from team to team. It never used to be that way. Uh, Brad is a great uh, thing that I, I tell Brad, you know, he's his family, his wife and kids and Thing that I love about Brad is that your character, I'm going to remember your character more than I remember your, your playing. And his playing is amazing. He's a superstar player. But I always, you know, when I go back and uh, retire and I'm going to look back at all the guys I've coached and I'm going to always remember the character guys that are, that are, that are, that, are, that impact the, the community and make change and, want to do better and, and help the people that don't always get a fair shake. Uh, and Brad comes out, Russell comes up. I got a lot of guys. I can go down the list, but I'm just going to stick with our guys. Uh, but Brad is, he's a great um, leader for our team, our community. Uh, and we're not interested. We're not interested. I, I'm, just, I'm going to just tell Tommy, you might as well just block all the, the 29 other teams' numbers. We're not answering. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk to you last night, uh, just, you know, maybe to get your side of, of what happened with your ejection. Yeah, that's a um, good question. Uh, God, the sands of time flow so fast that I barely remember what happened yesterday. Um, you know, I think... Uh, it was a bit of frustration, but uh, I disagreed with the delay of game. And uh, I got two quick technicals for, I guess, two comments that must have been over the line, somewhat profane, I suppose. And I was, I was looking back at uh, your career stats and um, 
through your first seven years in the league, you only had two ejections and, and very few technicals. Last six years, you've had eight and quite a few more technicals. I'm just curious, like, is, is something been different about, you know, as you've gotten more experienced or, or older that you think has made you more susceptible to them or more likely to get them? No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's interesting, though. Fred? And I was, uh, I was just going to ask about the text, uh, unless Robin wants to share exactly what he said, which I, I suppose he probably doesn't, but. I can't recall at this point, honestly, it's been so long. Yeah, we'll keep it PG. Uh, Neil, go ahead. Hey, Robin, I'm curious, what's the balance between, you know, expressing frustration to the referees to, you know, see if you guys can get calls go your way more in the future versus also just not having to rack up those technical fouls? What's the balance there? That's a good question. I think going forward, though, we're really just kind of focused on ourselves, on playing our game, doing what we can do. Chase, did you have another? No. OK. Uh, anyone else? Ava, go ahead. Hey, Robin. I um, just wanted to know what it was like to actually have a foolish team back at practice today. What were you guys able to uh, get done? It was good. It was nice to get back and get after each other, um, have a physical practice, have a really uh, competitive practice, contentious practice. What's, I guess, everyone we've been kind of asking about how difficult this time period is being um, has explained how hard it is to get everyone to kind of lift their mentality up through all of this. How has it been keeping spirits high and keeping everything else right in your mind with everything in the world going on and then everything with you guys going on. What's that been like for you? Uh, you know, uh, I think we, we got to kind of deal with what's in front of us, with, uh, what we have available to us in the moment. Neil, you have one more? Yeah, uh, Robin, Scott and a lot of the other guys have talked about quote unquote NBA rhythm. What does that mean to you? And What's the difficult part of, you know, getting that with all of the craziness you guys have had to deal with the past few weeks? Yeah, it's definitely a gut feeling. Um, it's like, the, I guess, the obscenity laws in this country. You know it when you see it. Um, you know, it there's, I can't say much more than what you said about all, all, you know, all the issues with the roster that's been thrown our way. Uh, it certainly helps to have a lot of continuity in that department. Um, I think we're, we're going to have a better sense of rhythm going forward in that regard. All right, I think that's it, Robin. Yes, yeah, so I've been ejected from this call. Rui, what have these last few weeks been like for you as you try to work yourself into game shape? Um, you know, did, did it start with not being able to do much for a week or, or days at a time? Yeah, you know, it was, it was pretty hard, you know, for me, you know, I was – I was actually out for two weeks at the beginning of the season. And I came back, I played like five, six games, and I got, I was out for two weeks again. You know, it was very, um, physically and mentally, you know. I know it is what it is, what it is you know, and then um, I started walking out, and then, you know, I was in uh, kind of good shape. So, you know, I played last game yesterday, last night, but, you know, I think my mind wasn't right, you know, like I wasn't really like, focus on, you know, playing basketball, playing games. So, you know, I got to, I got to, I think I got to focus on more. Neil. Hey, Rui, uh, you, you worked with Corey a little bit after the game um, to put up some shots and things like that. Is what, what was your mindset? What were you hoping to get out of that? And then even afterwards, you were just watching DB um, take his shots. Is that kind of what you're saying about getting back into the mental aspect of it? need to get back to my basketball mentality, you know, like I I was out for two weeks, like I said, I was out for two weeks at the beginning of the season and then, you know, I came back and I was out for two weeks again. It's really hard to like keep my mind, you know, um, especially during the season. And, you know, we, everybody, somebody's out, somebody's in, you know, we actually, we never had a, everybody's face in the same time, you know, we never had a whole team yet. So it's, it's actually kind of crazy to think like that. But yeah, it's 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 been like hard to like you know um, keep my mind right, you know. But 
you know, I have to do. I want now. Nah, I don't got anything. You know, um, I don't think I get. I don't have any like you know. I don't think I gotta take care of my body, and then I think I'll be good. Fred. Hey, Rui. Um, un unrelated to the basketball, I know when you first showed up at Gonzaga, you mentioned that you really didn't know very much English at all. What What was the you you learned it very quickly. What was the process for you of just learning a completely new language while you were already in that country? Um, you know, I think a lot of a lot of people helped me out there. You know, the coaches, the teammates, uh, friends, uh, school, the teacher, everybody. You know, um, they even got me. Not me for me, but like as a team, they they got the guys speak English and Japanese. Um, I was in a good program, uh, ESL program, uh, most of my school years, you know, I was there for like almost two years. So like, you know, I was just really studying English, you know, and then, well, I think I learned more from uh, my teammates, you know, just communicate, just hanging out and on the court, off the court, you know, we, I was just like, you know, just trying to communicate with them, that's all I help. Anyone else? Good. Oh, Ava, good. Sorry. Um, Rui, you talked about what the past couple of weeks have been like for you, but what were you, how did you spend your time when you were just in isolation? Like, what were you, what was your day to day like? Um, I was watching a lot of games, you know, post hour games, post couple games. And then, I mean, we are out for weeks too, but, you know, um, I just game from the last, like, you know, couple of games from like the last month or something like that. And then, I was watching like basketball games, uh, playing video games, um, watching some on Netflix, something like that. Watch anything good on Netflix? Yeah, I was watching some crazy stuff. I don't know. It was like about prison, like inside of prison, <laughs> you know, reality. It was crazy. It was like you know, all over the world and then go see like prison and stuff and then live there for like a week. You know, it was crazy. It was interesting. <laughs> Really, you're sitting there in isolation. And you're watching a show about prison. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was really kind of you know, intense. You know, it was. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Chase, you have one more before we go to Japanese. Yeah, Rui, just a, a follow up on the the focus and the mental side of things. Um, you think that's something that maybe people should recognize about what you guys have gone through. Uh, as a team, how difficult it is to stay focused on basketball? You know, it's hard. Like I say, you know, um, we really haven't had a, like a whole team yet. You know, everybody, somebody's out in every game. And, uh, you know, of course, like, you know, we are very new, like, you know, we new team. Um, Russ just got here. He just got here last year. Uh, Danny got just here. You know, Brad's been here, but like everybody else in the team, you got injured, you know. It's, it's been really hard, but like, you know, I, I really love this team, you know, I, I like to play with these guys, um, you know, coaches, the whole staff, you know, it's, it's, it's a good team, you know, but we just gotta, you know, focus and win the games, you know, it's, I know it's hard, but like, you know, I think we, we start getting like, you know, more chemistry and then, you know, once we get started like playing together and then I think we're going to be good. 